What is the clearest passage of Scripture in the New Testament that proves dispensational teaching? You say 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, no, actually, that's just giving you the order, the command, to rightly divide the word of truth. The clearest scripture in the, you know, scripture meaning verses in the New Testament on dispensationalism is found in Ephesians chapter 3. This is one that the uh, non-dispensationalists can't duck. Now, of course, you know, Satan and his little devils and things will help them to twist scriptures and they'll just get it all mis mixed up. But if you're genuinely saved, you're going to see this thing. Let me show you. Get your King James Bible out and look it up, right? Again, don't just sit there and look at me, you know, and, and blink, blink, and, and while you're doing something else. Get your Bible and look this thing up. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. All right, just stop right there for a minute. This is not a title. We are not currently in the dispensation of the grace of God. All right? uh, he's saying, God's giving me this revelation here that I might dispense it. Okay? God's, I should say God's dispensing it to him, saying, you know, tell the people this. How do you know? Continue. Verse 3, how that by revelation, God revealed this to him, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. He makes a mystery known. Now, if this is something that has been going on since the beginning of time, Genesis, the whole way up through, it's the same gospel, it's the same everything else, it wouldn't be a mystery. Does that make sense? I sure hope so. You see, in the New Testament, there are certain mysteries that are given to truly saved Christians that lost people aren't going to understand. They're dead in trespasses and sins. They're spiritually dead. Ephesians chapter 2 talks about that. And you hath he quickened, verse 1, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. All right? Lost people are dead in trespasses and sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, talks about the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. All right? They can't get it. They don't understand it. And the mysteries that are there, uh, that are given to a Christian, are things that they don't get. All right? These are things that are first revealed to Paul, it's revealed to him, revelation given to Paul, and then he says, okay, I'm going to let you know about this, and you'll get the mystery if you're saved. Verse 4, Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Wait a second here. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. How do you not get that? Well, they were saved in the Old Testament by looking forward to the cross and were saved by looking back to the cross. Absolute nonsense. Again, I have a whole study refuting that. You know, if you haven't seen that one, I'd suggest you go watch that. The disciples over and over and over again did not understand what Jesus was trying to say to them when he would explain how he was going to die on the cross. They were not saved by looking forward to the cross. They didn't even understand what, was, what it was all about. And Jesus Christ, when he dies on the cross, comes up from the dead... He's walking with his disciples, and they still don't get it. So don't believe this non-dispensational lie that they got saved by looking forward to the cross before Jesus died on the cross. You know, it's nonsense. And you say, well, but the, 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 the Old Testament sacrifices that they did were, were in type Jesus Christ. Well, in type, yes, but they were not the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to die on the cross. You, you, but see, here's the whole thing. This just is basic stuff to you. If you're saved, you're going, well, yeah, this makes sense. But a non-dispensationalist is a lost person, and they'll go, well, but, but what about the... And, and they, they just try to twist and contort the Scriptures because of their lost condition. Verse 6, That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of His promise in Christ by the Gospel. Um, no, no, Paul, that's not a mystery. Okay, this is stuff that's been there, Genesis to Revelation. It's all the same thing. Uh, again, where are the Gentiles being saved in the Old Testament? Where are they going out, the Jews going out to the Gentiles and witnessing to them and preaching the gospel, just missionary trips and stuff like this? Where is it at in the Old Testament? If the gospel is the same, it should be there. You see how the non-dispensationalists have pulled your leg? You see how they deceive you? 
Verse 7, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been there, and everybody knew it. Thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't say that. That's why it's important to read from your King James Bible. It says, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Hid? It's been hidden and revealed to Paul? Over 4,000 years, this thing's been hidden? And now it's revealed to Paul? Yeah, that's why it's called a mystery. That's why lost people still to this very day don't get it. There's a lot of mysteries in the Bible. Again, I have a study on that. You can look at some of the different mysteries in the Pauline epistles that are given to a New Testament Christian that lost people aren't going to get. They're going to get it messed up. You see, for many, many, many centuries, being a Bible-believing Christian meant you were hunted down like an animal uh, by the governments, by the Catholic Church, uh, by Islam, by a lot of the other things, even a lot of the wicked Jews and things were hunting down Christians. You see that throughout the Pauline epistles. Um, they were traveling, you know, they'd find out Paul's over in some other city. They'd follow him over there and try to get him. You know, a couple times they had him and they were trying to kill him and things. I think the one time they actually did kill him. Um, and, the, you know, the brethren carrying him out, you know, of the city thinking that he's dead. And, they, you know, he gets up and goes back into the city and preaches. Okay, uh, the Christians have had, you know, enemies, serious enemies, uh, pretty much since the beginning there. Um, so uh, don't you think it might be kind of important for the Lord to set up a system whereby we can tell uh, who's a false brother or sister or whatever? Don't you think the Lord might have something there that He can supernaturally reveal to those that are saved and lost people aren't going to get it? So if you get to talking and things like this to people, you can tell who's a real versus a false convert to keep yourself safe. Yeah, that's what the Bible teaches. So just wanted to go over that real quickly here because um, it just amazes me how these non-dispensational people can twist the Scriptures. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll say, I, I think the, one of the funny ones is they'll say, you know, dispensation is a Bible word, but that doesn't mean we have to be dispensational. You know, because presbyter is in the Bible and that doesn't make me a Presbyterian. <laughs> like, they're so desperate so incredibly desperate they just can't handle the plain teachings of scripture and like i said you know that in another study they'll do this thing if they say well we acknowledge that there's an old testament and a new testament you know so there's the proper division of scripture but then they don't turn around and divide it they say it's the gospel's the same in both and like i said what was the point of jesus christ coming to the earth and dying on the cross if the people already had the gospel Don't listen to the non-dispensational heretics. They will lead you astray. They will cause a very serious spirit of confusion. And uh, if you're lost, uh, you're never going to get saved listening to a non-dispensational preacher. Thank you for watching.